Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this video we'll be doing a tech Q&A session that will be the end of uh, April and I've selected about 20 odd questions so let's uh, start rolling this out and I first question I got from Bikas he's asking about Nokia 7 plus he says do you find the Nokia 7 plus better than the Honor View 10 which has a better processor the current uh, 970 but priced at around 29,000 which is about 3,000 rupees more than the Nokia 7 plus I would say between um, uh, the Honor View 10 and the Nokia 7 plus yeah the Honor View 10 is a better product it has a better processor even uh, the camera is actually really good on that um, and uh, but I one thing I don't like about Honor View 10 uh, I'll be very frank is that EMUI I'm not a big fan of the custom skin don't get me wrong it's fine it doesn't lag or whatever but I feel stock uh, I prefer stock Android interface over custom UI but yeah between the two if I were uh, you I will pick the Honor View 10 if my budget permits uh, but again even though uh, Nokia 7 Plus is an excellent Android uh, smartphone. Uh, this is by Cable. He's asking Nokia 6.1 at uh, 15,000 rupees in offline stores. Is it a good uh, deal? Uh, Cable, uh, I would suggest watch the full in depth review that I posted about this Nokia 6.1 uh, just a few days ago. Uh, it's a decent phone, but again, I was not very much impressed with the Nokia 6.1. For example, uh, if you see my Nokia 7 Plus review, I raved about this phone. I genuinely liked uh, this phone. And I would say this is sort of a mini uh, Google Pixel, but I couldn't say that for the Nokia 6.1. It's a good phone, but again, some of the choices that Nokia did with that 6.1, I didn't like it. But if you're getting it for a very good deal, you can go with that. But again, watch my full in-depth review. I'll leave the link in the description area to see, uh, ch and check out the pros and cons. Then you decide for yourself. Uh, this is by uh, Malia. He is asking, is the 1000 mAh extra battery in the Zenfone Max, I think so, Zenfone Max Pro, he's uh, counting, uh, a theoretical 25% extra than the Redmi Note 5 Pro, both in charging time and backup time? Uh, you could say it's not exactly 25% time and even the Redmi Note 5 Pro has excellent battery life I would say it was giving me uh, when I was using the Redmi Note 5 Pro about easily about one and a half days this uh, Zenfone Max Pro can last easily about two days so battery life in both the phones are, is actually very good and if you're even a very heavy user even with the uh, Redmi Note 5 Pro it will easily last for a full one working day uh, and this might uh, easily last for about one and a half days so yeah in terms of uh, battery life yes the Zenfone Max Pro will give you slightly better battery life. in terms of screen on time I would say with my typical usage uh, with the uh, this Zenfone Max Pro I can get about eight and a half hours of screen on time similar usage uh, with the Redmi Note 5 Pro I was hovering about seven uh, to seven and a half so yes this will give you about one to one and a half hours extra of SOT uh, let's move to the next one. This is by Arya. He's asking, my question is, why updates on the Xiaomi Mi A1 are slow? Please raise this uh, question in the Q&A. Xiaomi uh, is not going with their promises. Yes, I've heard quite a few complaints from other users also regarding the Mi A1. And, and the, it's not getting updates. And even uh, new Android updates, they are getting delayed quite a bit. I hope uh, Xiaomi fixes that. I don't want a situation... Uh, uh, what we are seeing with Motorola for example um, earlier Motorola devices used to get Android updates very quickly even monthly security updates but now the situation is totally different and many users are pretty annoyed with Motorola with that so I hope uh, Xiaomi keeps its promise of Mi A1 because it's an Android one device and I'm also very saddened that they are not keeping up the promise and devices like Nokia etc which came much after uh, what do they Xiaomi uh, are providing monthly Android security updates and even uh, what do you say new Android uh, updates way quicker than the Mi A1. This is by Sinha. He's asking which one is better in overall performance, Redmi Note 5 Pro and the ASUS Zenfone Max Pro. Uh, I would say both of phones are very good. Both are running on the same chipset that is the Snapdragon 636. So the general performance of both the phones is identical. I would say mostly same, but the way they go about it is very different. With the Redmi Note 5 Pro, you have the Mi UI. Vera has on the ASUS Zenfone Max Pro. They're going going with this almost stock-like Android skin. Hence, uh, out of the box, it's coming with the android oreo update yes the android oreo update will come to the even the zenfone uh, sorry the redmi note 5 pro but it's going to take some time and by the time this comes maybe uh, they will push out the android p update on the zenfone max pro so in terms of update situation i would say the zenfone max pro goes ahead also in battery life uh, i would say both are having good battery life but yeah 
uh, if battery life is the highest priority, the Zenfone Max Pro will go ahead because it has simply has 1000 milliamp hour more battery. But in terms of camera, I feel uh, uh, the Redmi Note 5 Pro has a better camera than the Zenfone Max. So specifically, I would say the front facing camera, it's a huge difference between the uh, Redmi Note 5 Pro and the Zenfone Max uh, Pro. So again, weigh down the pros and cons. And this might also be a thing uh, with the Zenfone Max Pro. As they say, it was designed for Indian users. It is having a triple uh, slot. For example, you can put two uh, nano SIMs and also a micro SD card. So if you're a person who likes to use a micro SD card, have a lot of content on micro SD card and stuff that you can do. And, and again, simultaneously use two SIMs that you can do with the Zenfone uh, Max Pro, but you can't do that uh, with the, uh, what do you say, Redmi Note 5 Pro. And uh, I've heard that the Redmi Note 5 Pro will also get the true dual 4G voltage support. It's in beta. Let's see if it comes uh, when the regular update rolls out. Uh, by default, the Zenfone Max Pro has true dual 4G voltage. So uh, the good thing is that uh, we are lucky as consumers. We are getting some very good phones, both the Zenfone Max Pro and even, uh, what do you say, uh, the uh, uh, Xiaomi uh, Redmi Note 5 Pro are very good phones. So yeah, it's a good thing to have uh, such great phones and decide between them, I would say, frankly. We never had such good choices earlier. Uh, this is by CP. Will Google implement the dual camera for the Pixel 2 or will they go with the same setup? What are your thoughts? I frankly feel this time Google will implement a dual camera, but they won't do the stuff like everybody is doing. They're going to do something very different with that second camera. And I also think so. The notch might come on the Pixel 3 because the Android P SDK has default support for the notch. So yeah, I'm also not that happy about the notch thing but we might see with the Pixel 3. And strong rumors that uh, it'll go with the dual camera setup, but they're going to do something radically different and again, uh, hopefully shake up the industry. Uh, this is by Abhijit. Uh, uh, how are you doing? He's asked me. He's asking, uh, should I buy the Nokia 7 Plus or should I wait for some other smartphone? Please tell me, I am confused, eagerly waiting. I would say, I uh, if you see my review of the Nokia 7 Plus, this is Nokia 7 Plus, I would say, it's a very good overall smartphone. Yes, there are some cons. Every phone has a con. So there are some niggling cons about this device. But apart from that, I would say it's a very good Android phone if your budget is around 25,000. And certainly my uh, favorite pick, I would say as of now for a price of about 25,000. So if you have a budget of about 25,000, yes, this would be my first pick as of now. Again, watch my review for the pros and cons and then make a informed decision. Uh, this is about Roy. Uh, <laughs> it's a personal question he's asking. Uh, were you related to tech from your childhood? Uh, let's say I was a guy who used to open up stuff quite a bit and get into trouble from, from when I was young. For example, uh, when I was very small, I had a gaming console, Atari, if you guys uh, recall. And I had opened up its controller and stuff, remapped its stuff on that. Uh, later made a mod with the controller. Uh, so yes, I was a guy who used to tinker around with uh, anything electronics from very early age. And uh, I started programming uh, also very early age. Uh, I didn't have a personal computer of, of mine. So uh, when I was small, maybe, I don't know, in sixth or seventh class, I don't recall. I used to sneak out at night. My elder cousin had a computer and do some programming there. So yeah, I had that, uh, what do you say, urge of figuring out things uh, in computers and stuff from very early on age. That's why I love computers. If still uh, pro doing programming on computers or uh, working with electronic stuff. It doesn't uh, feel work to me. I really enjoy that. So uh, let's move to the next one. This is by Mystery. He's asking, please let me know which is the best phone under rupees 15,000. Camera must be the best. Oh, this is interesting. I would say as of now, uh, under rupees 15,000, Redmi Note 5 Pro uh, would be my best pick for the camera. And uh, near second to that would be the Honor 7X. These are the two smartphones, I would say, for camera under 15,000 as of now. This is by Aditya, he's asking, is stock Android fingerprint slower than custom UI? For example, we have seen that the Mi A1 and the Zenfone Max Pro have a very slow fingerprint scanner. Whereas Redmi Note 5 Pro, Honor 7X, uh, etc. are other sp uh, smartphones are running on custom UI and have fast fingerprint scanner. No, it's nothing like that. For example, uh, let me give you an idea. Uh, this is the 
uh, Nokia 7 Plus. This is almost stock Android and it has a blazingly fast fingerprint scanner, as you can see, very fast. So it's not like that. Uh, yes, the fingerprint scanner on this uh, Asus Zenfone Max Pro is not that fast, as you can see. It takes half a second to come. But again, these things uh, can be optimized with the software. Let's see. Uh, Asus team has uh, mentioned that with the OT update, they'll fix it. We'll know that very soon. But yeah, Huawei in particular has, I think so, one of the fastest fingerprint scanners in the industry. So again, the hardware also matters, the fingerprint hard hardware, what they have put. Uh, let's move to the next one. This is by uh, Mr. Madhav Reddy. He's asking best smart TV under one lakh only Sony, Samsung and LG. Please reply. Uh, I uh, would personally say I had experience with all these uh, TVs. I have a, uh, we have a Sony t television, Samsung and LG. And if I uh, it was just me again, I'm uh, going to buy a TV. I would uh, t pick between Samsung and LG. I have good luck with my Samsung television and even the LG. LG, why, what I liked is that because of the IPS panel, it's easier on the eye. Whereas my Samsung panel, I really like um, the picture quality on it. It's very sharp. But after like three, four hours, it becomes a little bit tiring because it's super sharp, I would say. Uh, so again, if I were you uh, and Sony we had, I would say it has the poorest picture quality among these three. Uh, so I would go with between a Samsung and an LG. And in fact, I'm planning to upgrade one of my television to a 4K HDR uh, TV. And I'm looking at uh, some panels. Uh, I'm gonna be looking between Samsung and LG personally. Uh, this is by uh, KP. He's asking, uh, how do you feel about wireless charging in 2018? Can we use those as our main chargers? Is the speed as good as normal fast charger? Please share the experience. Uh, Nawaz, no. Uh, wireless charging is not as fast as your regular charger, let alone fast chargers. Even we have fast charging, uh, wireless fast charging, but again, it is also actually pretty slow. So wireless charging is used on a lot of high-end smartphones. For example, uh, the iPhone 10 has that. Most of the Samsung, uh, this is the S9 has that so you can use this for topping up i would say but again if you are expecting that uh, you'll put uh, your uh, smartphone on a wireless charger and you need a uh, charge in uh, 30 minutes that won't happen so it's still wireless cha charging is actually pretty slow so that's that's the reason that's not the main mode of charging and still uh, if you want to fast charge you have to use your traditional chargers and i don't think so the situation will change uh, anytime very quickly this is by Irani, he's asking, any stuttering issues on the Zenfone Max Pro M1? And second, okay, first question. I didn't notice any stuttering in uh, normal usage, I would say. Uh, and again, this is the three gigabyte RAM variant that we have. So in general usage, it's uh, good. I never uh, had a problem with this device. So overall in the UI, no issues and haven't faced any lagging issues like we see on Samsung phones and stuff. So uh, no lagging. The second question is, can the Redmi Note 5 Pro get dual 4G VoLTE via OTA update? Technically, yes, it can get a dual 4G VoLTE via OT update because the Snapdragon 636 chipset has the hardware capability to have that uh, dual 4G uh, VoLTE. Uh, but the question is, as I mentioned earlier, uh, think about this as cars. You get a car, let's say, base, a basic car, let's say it's 5 lakh, but the top end variant of that car, maybe the VXI or whatever, SXI or whatever, might be about 8 lakhs. So it's the same car, same engine, but you're getting a lot more features when you go to the high end level. So same ch uh, thing with the with this chipsets. Uh, Qualcomm offers a lot of, what do you say, modules on their chipsets, but they charge a royalty if you if the oem wants to enable that feature and sadly for a dual 4g VoLTE, uh, qualcomm charges uh, what do you say some premium so i don't know if xiaomi is going to pay that uh, royalty if they pay that royalty to qualcomm yes technically with the ota update they can enable that feature but question is uh, will they do it or not uh, this is by uh, uh, Dr. Joshan, is the Vivo V9 worth the buy or kindly suggest me a uh, phone in the budget of 25 to 35,000? This is interesting. I would say uh, Vivo V9. <laughs> Uh, I would say Vivo V9, if selfie is your highest criteria, it has one of the best selfies cameras. I did test it. And if you want a phone to look alike, uh, like the iPhone 10, these are the two th reasons uh, I would recommend the Vivo V9. Apart from that, I wouldn't simply recommend the Vivo V9 because they're a lot better handsets. I would, uh, uh, I would say that around 25,000, 
the Nokia 7 Plus would get my vote any day over the Vivo V9. And if you can stretch your budget to about 20, uh, 35,000, we have the OnePlus 5T. But if you can wait till, uh, I would say, middle of May, the OnePlus 6 might be launching. And that should also come in the budget of about 35,000. And trust me, it will be better than the Vivo V9 any day. Let's move to the next one. This is by Devander. He's asking, do you think that Huawei have got the pricing of the P20 Pro horribly wrong in India at 65,000 rupees, especially when you can get a Pixel 2 XL at around the same price range and with some online deals. I don't see the P20 camera performing better than the Pixel, which was the P2's main selling point. Uh, I didn't uh, test the uh, P2 uh, Huawei P20 uh, camera side by side from the Pixel, but some of the snaps that I took with the uh, P, uh, P20 came out very good. P20 Pro, sorry, came out very good. But you are definitely right, and I, I even tweeted about this. Huawei got the pricing of the P20 Pro very wrong in India. At 65,000 rupees, it's a very hard sell. Don't get me wrong, it's a very good uh, smartphone. The camera is outstanding. Even that 5X zoom, when I was using, uh, the pictures were very crisp on that. So it gets uh, does some things pretty interesting, I would say. But uh, I don't think so Huawei is going to get a lot of sales at around 65,000. I was expecting, frankly, that they will price it around 50,000 because if you even look at the Honor View 10, if you look at the international pricing, it's priced at around 39,000 if we convert it from international pricing, but they launched it in India at what, 30,000. So I was also thinking uh, Huawei would have been aggressive this time and they would have launched it at 50,000. But again, they have launched it at 65,000. So I don't think so. They're going to get, frankly, a lot of sales with the P20 Pro. But certainly I won't uh, discount the camera. The uh, P20 Pro has a very good camera. Uh, will it uh, beat uh, the Pixel 2 XL in every scenario? I doubt that. But uh, the camera is certainly good. But yes, uh, the advantages of Pixel are almost stock like Android experience. The big problem with Huawei is that that EMUI feels a little bit bloated and uh, it, it just doesn't feel that right. It doesn't lag, don't get me wrong, but uh, that EMUI uh, just puts me off. Uh, so yeah, if I have to pick between the two Pixel 2 XL and the Huawei P20 Pro, I might personally go with the Pixel uh, 2 XL, but that's just me because I prefer the stock Android experience over the heavy EMUI. Uh, this is Ramesh. Uh, uh, have have been using the. He's asking this uh, to me a personal question again. Hi, have been have seen uh, you using the iPhone 10 because of your Apple Watch 3. Yes, certainly you're right. I only use the iPhone 10 because of the Apple Watch, and my primary SIM is never in the iPhone uh, 10. Anyways, let's continue. And you must uh, be having the Pixel 2 XL. Which one do you prefer among these uh, phones? and the OS. I understand that Apple ecosystem uh, and all, but the seek a winner among them. Definitely, I prefer Android uh, OS over, uh, what do you say, the iPhone 10. Even, in fact, I have already made a video why I don't uh, use the iPhone 10 as my primary smartphone. The Apple ecosystem is very restrictive to some of the things that I like to do on my smartphone. So, obviously, Android is uh, the way to go, and my primary SIM is uh, almost all, every time on a Android smartphone. Pixel, I am not using it as, as my primary sim because my thing is that I need to keep testing new devices and generally whatever device I'm testing, I test it with my primary sim. So yes, any day I would say if I had to choose one smartphone, uh, Android smartphone or an iPhone, I would go with the Android phone because of the flexibility that Android offers for me. Again, I've made a video why I don't use the iPhone 10 as my primary smartphone. I'll leave the link in, in the description area for more info. Uh, this is by Patel. Uh, will Asus Zen Phone Max Pro stay on stock interface forever as it sh shows Zen UI in about the phone? Prasad, yeah. The thing is that uh, if you go into about of the uh, Asus Zen Phone Max Pro, it shows Zen UI. And, but uh, they have modified the Zen UI for the Zen Phone, uh, Zen Phone, I'm sorry. Asus, uh, yeah, Zen Phone Max Pro. Yeah, I'm confusing Max Pro, I'll call it. But they have like toned down the UI and have they, they have made uh, this version of the Zen UIs 
close to stock android so yes it's going to be a uh, stock android oh, 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 but again it does have some elements of the zen ui for example if you dive down deep into the menus you have options like gestures and stuff which is not found on actually stock android so it's a flavor of zen ui which is close to stock android i would say this is something like oxygen os i would say oxygen os is not pure android but again it's close to stock android that is uh, the case with this uh, zenfone max pro uh, this is by sileshwar he's asking would you recommend the me tv 4k 55 inch or is it better to choose a tarvan brand like lg and samsung oh this is a very tricky and interesting question i'll share my experience because i can just share my experience i had got a review unit of this uh, me tv for uh, 4k 55 inch but it was sort of defective the usb ports didn't work and even uh, some of the hdmi ports didn't work with that one uh i contacted the what do you say xiaomi team and even after about two months they couldn't replace that television they were giving me always excuses next week next week next week uh, and finally i got uh, so fed up i asked them to pick it up and take the tv out because it just was taking up too much space in my testing room so that's the problem with the me tv and i've noticed some users also have on twitter have uh, mentioned me they got some defective units and they're having problems getting it replaced i think so that's the problem with this me tv they simply don't have enough units if you get a defective unit or whatever uh, they can quickly replace it so but what i liked about the me tv is that uh, for the price for that forty thousand the image quality what i was getting it's not stellar i would say it's not the best image quality i've seen but again some of the other tvs that uh, i'm comparing cost more than twice than this one so for that price it's offering a lot but the problem is if you get a defective unit or if you have a problem uh i don't know how quickly you will get service or uh, if you have to replace the panel how quickly xiaomi would do that so personally i'm also looking for as i mentioned uh 4k hdr television and again i might be going with the uh, lg or a samsung mostly i might be going with the lg high-end uh, tele but again i'm going to pay almost three or four times the price of that uh, me tv so again as you can see love it for what they are offering at that price but uh, i don't know if you get a defective one how quickly they'll service it that's the problem this is by uh, Lakshman Rao. He's asking Nokia 8 Sirako camera versus the Huawei P20 Pro camera comparison. No point. The Huawei P20 Pro will beat the crap out of the Nokia 8 Sirako's camera. End of the story. No point. It's the Huawei P20 Pro's camera is in another league. So just forget about it, I would say. Uh, this is by Kiran. Uh, can you please uh, review the uh, Huawei P20 Lite and let me know which is better camera phone out of the P20 Lite and the Redmi Note 5 Pro. That's a pretty interesting one. Uh, I've asked the Huawei team to send me the, uh, what do you say, P20 Lite, but they haven't done that. As soon as I'm able to get hands on it, I will definitely actually test it because I'm also pretty eager uh, because the camera is again the strength of the Huawei P20 uh, Lite. And if the camera is good, yes, it might be the best smartphone camera under 20,000, but I just don't want to comment without testing it. So I'm also looking forward to test out the Huawei P20 Lite as soon as I'm able to get it i will definitely do that so guys these were the 20 odd questions uh, for this uh, tech q a session again we'll be doing this tech q a sessions after a week or after two weeks or so so again stay tuned to my channel and if you're still not subscribed to my youtube channel hit that subscribe button thanks for watching this is ranjit and i hope to see you in my next video take care guys